in Leviticus chapter 10, something happened that we all need to know in terms of ministering to the Lord. Something happened. And I'm going to take it from verse, I'm going to take uh, verses one to three, verses one to three. And I want us to pay attention to what happened and what the Lord said after that, because it's important. It says, the Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, these were sons of Aaron. Each took a censer and put fire in it, just as a priest would do, because they were priests. And put incense on it and offered profane fire before the Lord, which he had not commanded them. Everything was as a priest, except that there's a little word there called profane. In fact, the old King James call it strange fire. It's strange. It's not the kind of fire the Lord is used to. Neither is it any that he likes. Then something happened. So fire went out from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. And Moses said to Aaron, this is what the Lord spoke, saying, by those who come near me, I must be regarded as holy. And before all the people, I must be glorified. So Aaron held his peace. Does anyone have a modern translation of those three verses quickly as you read it for us so that we just take, take it before we go into today's ministration? And we'll pray for ourselves in one or two minutes that God will help us even in this area. Uh, there may not be physical death, but there can be spiritual death. When people are used to offering strange fire, fire before the Lord, when people are used to offering profane fire before the Lord, the one he has not commanded, the one that is not according to his own order. But you know, he's a ministering to the Lord. But there are many people who have died because of this. You may say, well, maybe we have not seen too many people die uh, like that, you know, physically, like uh, Ananias and Sapphira or something like that. No, that's, that is even... Uh, a quick one. You know, Adam and Eve, God said, if you eat this, this uh, fruit of the knowledge of, uh, the, the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of uh, good and evil, he said, you will die. When they ate it, they must have told themselves and said, we have not died, but they have died. Many people cannot connect with God truly because they have died. There's no life of God in them. Whatever proceeds from them doesn't bring life to anybody. It brings death. Hallelujah. Amen. It's the letter that kills, not the spirit that gives life. Something has left their altar. Because it's a strange fire. And there are many of these all around today, which we think there are five, you know, a, a novice, an undiscerning man will say, wow, there is fire in that. Or it's a strange fire. Even in terms of worship, there are many people, many things people do today that are nowhere near what is acceptable before the Lord. And we must be careful of that. It's all around us. They may look fiery. In our, in our eyes, but they are strange fire all the same. And anyone who wants to come to God, God then spoke. When they died, they actually died physically. 
And when they died, the word of the Lord came and said, those who come near me, they must regard me as holy. They must not trivialize my presence. They must not think my presence, you know, I don't really mind anything. Because that's what this boy did. God doesn't really mind. Whichever way we did, we have done it. He will accept it anyway. He doesn't care. God cares. And before all the people, I must be glorified. I must be glorified. Our purpose is to honor the Lord. Our purpose is to glorify him. Anything that will not glorify him cannot be acceptable to him. No matter how good it may seem to us, even in our ministering to the Lord, we can think so much like angel, but if it's proceeding from a bitter, angry, malicious heart, then there is a problem already with us. Unforgiving and all the rest of it, all those things that can come in, contaminate an offering unto the Lord. And that's why he says, even when you bring your offering, if you discover that there's an, oh, there's, there's an issue between you and somebody else, go and settle it first. Because whatever you offer without that is strange. There's something that has made it profane. There's something that has polluted it. And we all must be careful about that. He's a forgiving God, but he also, he also has a standard for those who want to approach him and minister to him. In fact, God warned Aaron, he said, don't cry because I just have to deal with this. And I'm praying that the Lord will help all of us in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. There are things we must never trivialize. God wants us to take his presence as very important. Do you understand that? In approaching the presence of God, <laughs> let's take it as something important. Let's not treat the presence of God as something to be despised. Is it not just to carry a microphone and sing? No, it's beyond that. Is it not just to just you know, do one or two things? No, it's beyond that. Ministering to the Lord requires some sense of responsibility in what we bring to him. Amen. Man. So that warning is very important so that we all get it very clearly. You remember the sons of uh, Eli? Ophni and Phinehas? They just thought the presence of God can be despised. And that's why sometimes I, I shudder in terms of, uh, sometimes we go to the extreme that except for the, for the mercy of God, we go to the extreme. What I want to say now, uh, it's not a criticism per se. It's just something that I personally, I fear doing. I, I just fear it. You know, there are these gestures we now bring to the to the to the to the pulpit. We give them microphone and they make mockery of holy things. It, it, honestly, I shake. They pretend as if they are speaking in tongue. 
to make people laugh. No, no. We are, de we are de desecrating holy things. They turn the, the Bible upside down just to make people laugh. No, we are not in, we are not in the house of God for that. I, I thank God for the sacrifice of Jesus that keeps on pleading mercy, Father. Mercy. If we want to listen to them, we can go and meet them. But to now turn the pulpit into that, there's what we call godly humor. I like godly humor. Myself and a brother, we were still... You know, we're exchanging WhatsApp message yesterday, and there's a way he says things that will make you laugh. And I said, look, you are unbeatable when it comes to godly humor. Then he responded in another way that you cannot, you cannot but laugh, but they are godly. Nothing in it that is profane before the Lord. We need to clear. Is the point I'm making clear this morning? May the Lord help us in Jesus' name.